they've got a packed agenda. Um, I would like to take this opportunity first um, while I'm speaking to thank all our speakers today. If you can give me a wave as well um, and everyone else a wave when I call your name, just so we know where you are. Um, so Tom Esler from MFG Solicitors and um, we've also got Anthony this morning, Anthony Snell from AJ and CI Snell. Gary Bayliss from Export Access, Helen Bowden from Orphans Press and the Herefordshire Business Board, and to Keith Beach um, and Richard Saper from Worcestershire County Council. Um, so that's me. Thank you very much, speakers. We're very, very grateful for you um, sharing your time and your information with us today. Um, and can I hand over to you, Tom, first to kick us off? Thank you, Sean. Um, yes, as Sean says, I'm Tom Essler. I'm a commercial litigation partner uh, within MFG Solicitors. Uh, I'm also part of the food and drink sector offering we have here at MFG. Uh, I've been asked to give a short update in relation to um, interesting uh, uh, developments legally over, the, over 2020. Um, 2020 has to a certain extent been dominated by, by, by two things, Brexit and coronavirus. Um, so I'm going to touch on both of those. First being Brexit uh, and the, um, the, the, the ongoing issues in relation to the transition period coming to an end at, at 31st of December of this year. Um, one of the key issues for food and drink industry is in relation to labeling uh, and how uh, labeling will uh, uh, be affected when when we when the transition transition period comes to an end. The UK government, uh, our government, has actually issued some guidance on the steps um, which manufacturers, retailers, and suppliers uh, must comply with uh, from the first of January 2021. Effectively, uh, the UK will allow the continued use of an EU or Northern Irish uh, food business operator address on the label. Um, rather than require a UK address for imported food from the EU or Northern Ireland until the 30th of September 2022. Uh, food from and sold in uh, the GB can continue to be labelled as origin EU until the 30th of September 2022 and uh, those geographical indicator products um, uh, which are registered before the 1st of January 2021 will have until the 1st of January 2024 to change the packaging and labelling materials uh, to display the new UK geographical indicator logo. Um, as at uh, today's date, the EU has not updated their provisions. So effectively, as of the 1st of January 2021, all food products placed on the EU market will have to continue to meet EU rules, including having an EU address. Uh, on labels and packaging uh, for the for for the uh, food producer or first importer into the EU, um, uh, as well as continuing to abide with all other EU uh, country of origin requirements. The guidance is published on the government website, uh, and it does contain specific provisions in respect of other products, including, amongst other things, honey, eggs, fruit, vegetables, beef, and veal. The other big, uh, uh, bit of an understatement really, big issue for food producers has been coronavirus uh, and the impact that has had in relation to, um, to, 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 to production and manufacturing. Over the course of the, the pandemic, there have been a number of highly publicized outbreaks, uh, specifically in, in, in food production, processing plants, farms, but particularly abattoirs and meat packaging plants. Um, this has all highlighted the, the, the need for rigorous health and safety assessments uh, and, and companies and organisations ensuring that they have full risk, risk assessments put in place, particularly as, uh, as we anticipate that the government and regulatory authorities will uh, be uh, undertaking more rigorous inspections and assessments going forward. Um, these risk assessments have become much more complex, uh, specifically in food production um, workspaces, principally because a lot of them t tend to be uh, cold and wet, which seems to preserve the virus. Um, factory lines 
um, and enclosed areas don't allow a great deal of social distancing. So it is, it is difficult for, or it is proving very complex for organizations and employers to put appropriate uh, risk assessments in place. These are issues for all employers, not just uh, uh, those associated with food and drink. Um, it seems to, in the absence of any clear end point until we have a vaccine, it looks like we're going to have to live with um, this virus for some considerable time, at least into the new, at least into the new year. And so, it is important that, um, as far as possible, that all steps are taken to ensure employee safety. Um, our employment team within uh, MFG has been providing detailed employment and HR guidance on the implications of COVID from the outset. Um, and if anyone has any issues, I thoroughly recommend that you look at our dedicated COVID uh, pages on our website. One other interesting um, piece of litigation, uh, which has come through the system this year, is in, is in respect of use by dates on food. Uh, on the 6th of April 2020, earlier this year, the High Court in Birmingham actually, actually uh, uh, gave a judgment uh, that offering food for sale, which was past its use by date, amounted to a criminal offence. Um, we all know the, that there's been, lots, there's been lots of publicity in respect of best buy and use by dates, but this is the first time a court has actually said it is, it is a criminal offence. And that's a criminal offence under the Food Safety and Hygiene Regulations 2013. Now, those regulations themselves um, make it a criminal offence to contravene or fail to comply with European legislation, specifically the Food Safety Regulations and the Food Information Regulations. Um, the Food Information Regulations set out requirements for food labelling for consumers, including use by dates. Uh, and the court found that Tesco, in this instance, it's Tesco's in Birmingham, uh, one of the Tesco branches, was offering for goods for sale with expired use-by dates, uh, and they found that that was or amounted to a criminal offence. Tesco has accepted that the food was outside the use-by date, but not in itself unsafe, but the court simply were not buying it. They applied. Uh, they said there was no uh, ambiguity in the European legislation and basically found that it was a criminal offence. Um, this ties back into what I was saying at the outset about food labelling and just how uh, important um, uh, the details of any deal as and when it comes through or, uh, or, or no deal in relation to Brexit are and how uh, close we are getting to the wire or the cliff edge now, specifically in relation to communication of what it is uh, uh, food manufacturers and processors are or should be doing. Um, however, in the absence of any certainty from the, from the government in, in either regard, it would appear that that's, uh, all directly effective European legislation will be rolled over, if not adopted, uh, into the UK uh, law, at least for a, period of, uh, for a further period of time. Um, that's all I really want to say about developments uh, this year. There's, there's, there's been... Obviously, it's a slight, a slight under, understatement to say that's all there is in relation to Brexit or coronavirus, but those are the sort of the highlights I've picked out. Um, within our food and drink sector here, we offer legal advice on all principal areas of law, including uh, regulatory, dispute resolution, property, corporate and commercial, and private client. Um, I'd just like to point out that we're also ranked within our own um, uh, uh, ranking systems for solicitors, Legal 500 and Chambers, uh, that were ranked number one for agricultural and rural affairs. So we do have a significant depth of experience here in dealing with uh, food and drink and food and drink production. If anyone has any questions or wants to raise anything with me, I'm more than happy to take uh, questions, uh, as, as Healy says, at the end. Other than that, Thank you, Tom. Um, just have a quick look in the chat. Um, not any questions at the moment. Um, anyone got any burning questions they want to ask Tom now from what he's talked about? No? Um, if not, thank you very much, Tom. Um, yeah, he definitely picked up on the, the, clearly the two major issues um, this year, COVID, EU exit, um, and interestingly packaging that we spoke about at our manufacturing forum quite a bit. Yeah, so yeah. 
one that seems to be um, cropping up um, for a lot of people. So thank you very much for that and sharing that information. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, so next um, we have Anthony, Anthony Snell um, from AJ and CI Snell. Welcome Anthony um, and I believe you're going to share your story with us so, um, so thank you for that and your time today and I'll hand over to you. Um, yes, uh, no, uh, lovely to talk to everybody about the, uh, the food industry in, um, in Herefordshire and Worcestershire. Um, I wanted to first of all show um, a little a little film um, of our uh, farm and um, if um, Hayley could sort that out. Yep, bear with me a second Anthony, I'll just share my screen now. Okay, can you all see that? Yep. Okay, here we go. Could we have the music as well? <laughs> oh, can't you hear it? No. Can't you hear that at all, Anthony? Can anyone uh, hear that? No. Hayley. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. Um, I've got the volume up everywhere. I don't know how best, uh, that's the best I've got, unfortunately. Um, I don't know how much more, I'll be able to share it after, um, after the um, event in the thank you email, if that's okay, Anthony. Yeah, can we still watch the video? I can um, still play the rest of the video. It just won't it's have the um, music in the background, I'm afraid. Okay. We'll just on, just carry on with it quickly. It won't take long, and then uh, it's a summary of our. Uh, oh, of I'm our ever so time. sorry. Well, I'll share it with you with everyone after as well. But I'll continue to play. There we go. 
Okay, I'm sorry you didn't have the music in the background because that always makes it a little bit better. I just wanted to show you that very quickly as part of my, um, uh, my talk. Um, it was done because I like to promote a local company, uh, Shooting Reels, who did this. And, uh, you know, we find it very, very useful um, in, you know, we always promote when we have our customers coming along. And, uh, and also it gives a quick summary in about three minutes of the, um, of the farm, which I'm going to talk about uh, now. Um, so what I'd like to, um, uh, you know, ob obviously I'm a soft fruit grower in Herefordshire. I'm also part of the NFU Horticultural Board. So basically horticulture and um, soft fruit. Um, I want to just talk about sort of three aspects, really. Firstly, I want to talk about the, um, I'd like to talk about the challenges, the big challenges we've had in this year um, and, you know, and going forward. Um, <clears throat> secondly, I'd like to talk about all the positive things, all the um, uh, really the, the joys of, uh, of, of this year. Um, and um, thirdly, I just want to talk briefly about um, some of the innovation um, that we're doing in, in agriculture and horticulture um, and here in Herefordshire. So first of all, I wanted to be the challenges. Um, I thought best to talk about that first of all. The biggest challenge for us going forward is, is the availability of labour. And, um, you, know, you know, we didn't know at the beginning of this year um, really, um, you know, either the labour availability and we certainly don't know the labour availability next year. Um, you know, we do want the seasonal agricultural worker scheme to increase. Um, and, um, you know, but it's, um, you know, as you know, up until this year, unemployment was the lowest for 40 years. I mean, a very, very low unemployment levels. It's a bit, uh, you know, there's more unemployed at the moment, but it's only 7% or whatever, um, you know, in our sector, in the soft fruit sector, 70% of our costs are labour. Um, and, um, you know, that's gone up again this year. The national living wage has risen by 34% since 2016, um, which is, you know, very, very significant um, for people in our sector. Um, you know, the strawberries we grow, you know, it's, uh, the labour cost alone is 40000 pounds a hectare um, and it's only really the black current um, harvest that you saw in that film um, which is um, fully mechanical um, so you know um, this year um, we were we were we did have quite a few British workers um, and um, nationally there's only been about 10% um, or 11% um, of the um, British workers uh, we're very supportive of British workers, but the reason we have seasonal workers from abroad is because, um, you know, they're, they're fantastic. They benefit the economy. They come here, they pay tax and the national insurance, and then they go home. It's, everything's positive about seasonal workers from abroad. Um, we, had, um, we had a team of British workers. They were very useful, nice people. We got on very well with them, but they didn't stay very long. Um, you know, a lot of them were some, some of them were furloughed workers and went returned to work. Um, some went back to school or university, but they definitely didn't want to work for the six months that um, that we need our seasonal workers for. Um, they didn't want to start at um, you know five o'clock in the morning when we start. We pick our fruit early in the morning to make sure the quality is good, and. Um, Anyway, so labour is a really a, a major thing and we do want, you know, the big message we want to get across is, um, and I have asked um, within the NFU um, uh, meeting with the um, Secretary of State for the Environment, George Eustace, who did say he's supportive, um, you know, we do need, um, you know, 75,000, 70,000 seasonal workers who basically come here, do the job and go home. Um, that's... Um, so that was the first challenge, and we just don't know where we are for next year. The second challenge has been the low supermarket prices this year, which is um, probably beneficial to all of you um, on the screen here. Um, um, you know, uh, but uh, but it's you know it's really challenging. The margins are a lot tighter now for us uh, in the in in our sector. Um, the um, 
obviously the uh, COVID-19, uh, a major, um, you know, additional cost. It's added 6% to our uh, 2020 costs. Um, you know, a, apart from the pack house area, um, all the staff are working in the open countryside. So it's very easy and very positive um, in farming because um, it's easy to do social distancing. Um, we have all the hand washing and sanitizing and all this, this sort of thing. And we haven't had any issues um, as of yet and hopefully um, won't do going forward. But, you know, we all, you know, but it is positive, the fact that, um, it, you know, working in the countryside outside. The other great challenge has been the, the weather for us all in horticulture. Um, as you know, it's the wettest winter for a hundred years. Um, then we had, um, which is very positive, we had a warm spring, um, warmest spring for 80 years, apparently. And um, then it was the driest May for 124 years. So, you know, here in the UK, we've got very good weather. You know, we get variable weather. Uh, it's raining outside. But very good weather for fruit and vegetable production compared to, you know, other parts of Southern Europe and the world, you know, so, you know, it's very positive. The export opportunities, fruit and veg and British farming production is positive, you know, but we just don't know where we're going to be post Brexit, but it is positive, you know, that we can produce it here in the UK. Um, right. Um, I'll, I'll move on now to the uh, sort of what I think are the, uh, the positives, um, um, you know, those are the challenges. The positives uh, this year, um, what we we are part of a cooperative um, called um, Berry Gardens, um, which I'm a director of. It's the UK's largest soft and um, stone fruit cooperative, um, specialising in, in, in all sorts of things. It supplies 81% of the premium um, berries. Um, the, it's interesting, actually, the strawberry um, acreage has, um, you know, the, the tonnage is, um, you know, 76,000 tonnes this year. And we're still actually picking strawberries at this um, moment, uh, which is, uh, you know, and this isn't in um, glass houses. This is in ordinary polytunnels and uh, we're picking today. And um, we've seen, um, you know, strawberries have seen a 38 percent increase in production since 2014. Um, and obviously the sales are slightly down this year, um, but, uh, but the demand has been pretty good. So we're quite positive about it. And uh, obviously, you know, um, the other fruits, raspberries, 12,000 tonnes, um, blackberries. Uh, there's a new sweet blackberry called Victoria that uh, our cooperative Berry Gardens uh, um, supply. And uh, we have 73% of the market share with that. And a lot of that is grown in Herefordshire at um, Hay Grove, and um, we, we grow some of that as well, um, but it's, um, that's good. And blueberries have seen 77% um, increase from 2014, and our cooperative is 14% up on sales on blueberries this year. So, you know, we're very positive about, um, about soft fruit and uh, the health, you know, it's great, you know, that um, the increase in consumption of healthy fruit and veg is good for everybody. And we really want to promote that. Um, it reduces the risk of heart disease and, and cancer and premature death 